64. Quite a bit of pain. 
and they're running some more tests and trying to find out what's causing her pain. Remember Tiffany Ivey, Brother Joy said that uh, she's had a lot of shoulder problems and uh, a lot of pain with that. I know John Shirley sick this morning. Um, remember uh, Mark Anderson, remember I know the members again who are traveling, and uh, Blaine Bates has been sick this week. Remember him in prayer. Remember our services today. Remember me as I stand to bring God's word this morning. Remember those who are lost. Remember our nation in grace and peace of Jerusalem and Israel. Would any of you have a request at this time? Please remember Bert Johnson. She's fell and she's had a lot of problems. She's in her 80s. <laughs> Thank you. 
uh, Luke chapter 16. It's a very familiar verse of the scripture, and I trust that uh, as we read these verses, that we'll remember that God is an omnipotent God. There's none greater. There's none better. There's none more powerful. And so we begin our reading this morning in verse 19 of Luke chapter 16. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. There was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores, desiring to be fed with the crumbs that fell which fell from the rich man's table. More the dogs came and licked his sores. It came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels unto Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. In hell, lived, he lifted his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things. Likewise, Lazarus, evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from thence to you cannot Neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. This is a very familiar account, as I said a few months ago in the Bible, when I preached in this chapter, no doubt dozens of times down through the years. And it seems as though each time that uh, I preach from it that uh, I see some things I've not seen before. That's what's so wonderful about the study of God's Word. We can read it over and over again, and yet we can find new gems of truth in His Word as we read it over again. This morning, I'd like for us to think about the situation that one of these men found themselves in. Now, I know that there are some places that you probably had rather not go. There's some places that I had rather not go uh, for many different reasons. But there's a place that I heard about from the days that I was just a babe in arms up until the time that I trusted Jesus as my Savior that I knew that I didn't want to go. It's a place where this rich man went. And the message that I'm preaching today, and I know that those who are listening to the live streaming today, that um, maybe some of you would say, well, the type of preaching that you're doing today is very unpopular. And that people don't want to hear about their eternity. They don't want to know about their destiny. What is coming in the future? I think we need to know you know, people spend uh, dollars uh, seeking to find out what's going to happen in uh, their lives in the future. And yet, none of us know for sure what's going to happen. I can't tell you what's going to happen five minutes from now. I can't tell you what's going to happen five seconds from now, because I don't know. Only God knows that. And He holds the future in His hand. And as a result, that the future is in good hands. It used to be, in, I don't know if they still use this um, little commercial or not, but it was one of the major insurance companies that said, you're in good hands if you're insured with that company. Well, I don't know if that was the case or not, but still, that's what they advertise. But I tell you what's better than being insured with an insurance company is being insured for your eternal destiny through the Lord Jesus Christ. He has that eternal insurance. That insurance that we have now, we have to pay for it. We have to renew it every year when it comes up for renewal. And if you haven't received your latest 
Bill, yep, you're in, sir. So I got news for you. It's going up again. Uh, and it's going to continue to go up. But the cost of my salvation was greater than I could pay. You know, the Lord's blessed me down through the years to be able to uh, have the means to pay for uh, the insurance on my vehicles, to pay for the insurance on my home, and uh, for medical insurance and the things that uh, we needed to be insured against, the perils that we needed to insure ourselves against in this life, that uh, the Lord's always blessed that we've been able uh, to, to pay that. But then there was one debt that I owed I could not pay. I didn't have the means. There was not enough money in this world to buy my salvation. And Jesus stepped up and he purchased my salvation with his own blood. And that's what the rich man failed to understand. Was that Jesus purchased his redemption and all he had to do was trust Christ as his Savior. But he failed to do that. And if you read further down in this 16th chapter, you'll find that he had five brothers back on the earth. And he didn't want them to go to the place where he had gone. And the scripture tells us uh, about what he experienced when he got there. And it was not something that was pleasant. And he said that he was tormented in that place. And he said, just send an answer. See, he can dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I'm tormented in this flame. Now you know that he didn't say in these flames. He said in this flame. It's an all-consuming flame that's in hell. It's one that reaches out in every direction. It's one that you cannot escape. It's one that the fire department can't come and put out. It's one that's going to burn eternally. It's one that one day, and we, we're going to read about that a little bit later on in the message this morning, but one day that uh, hell will be cast into uh, an even uh, greater uh, place called uh, the lake of fire. But this rich man failed to prepare. Having all those years to prepare, he just simply failed to prepare. You want to tie this message this morning? Make a U turn now. For those of you who have, who have navigation or GPS on your vehicle, that little lady will come on there. If you don't go exactly the way she wants you to, she'll say, Make a U turn. <laughs> it might be through a parking lot or maybe through somebody's yard, but she'll tell you to make a U turn now. And you've heard me say before that uh, I don't always agree with it because I know the train more than she does. But, uh, and I'm not trying to be a smart aleck in saying that, but <clears throat> the Lord prepared a place for the devil and his angels. The devil is not your friend, my friend. He's not the friend of anyone. He's the master deceiver. He is the father of lies. He will bring down. He will drag down. Well, the statement was made in our Sunday school class this morning that Satan cannot force us to do anything. But he can get our minds and our hearts off of the gospel. And our need of the Lord. Friend, hell is a very real place. It's not the figment of someone's imagination. I heard one say, someone say one time, well, the only reason that's in the Bible is just to scare folks into joining the church. Listen, join the church is not going to save you. There's going to be many Baptist church members that burn in hell. And the reason they will is because they never believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. That lady tell me one time, well, you Baptists think that you're going to be the only ones in hell. I said, well, I'm more near minded than that. I don't believe all Baptists are going to be in heaven. 
they, they go, the Baptists are going to be in hell because they fail to believe in the only begotten Son of God. <clears throat> so since it's a real place, who will reside in hell? Well, the psalm said in Psalm 9, 17, the wicked shall be turned into hell. And I know that men do not like to be referred to in those terms, that they're wicked. But listen, if we're not saved, our heart is wicked. It's desperately wicked. And that's why we can't follow the dictates of our heart. As I've heard so much in the, uh, the uh, years, uh, the past few years, that people are saying, just follow your heart. That can get you into a great deal of trouble. Because your heart does not always lead you right, especially if Satan gets involved in it. The flame is real in hell. I know I, I've told this story before, but I want to use it again for an illustration this morning. One cold winter morning, years ago, I walked into a Sears department store. And I was walking down through the hardware department. And there was a fireplace insert sitting in there. And it looked like it had a fire in it. And for just a brief moment, I, I stood there with my hands behind me. My hands were about frozen still. And I stood there beside that fake fire. And then it, it dawned on me, well, you... You idiots, you standing before a fake fire. It's not real, it just looks real. But I can assure you this morning, the flame that's in hell is not fake. It's not just put there to look pretty. It's not put there uh, to be a decoration. It's there for a purpose. First of all, for Satan and his angels. And secondly, for all unbelievers. You know, it's not possible to leave hell and go to heaven. I know some believe that. And they have different names for it, such as purgatory or limbo. I think they've dropped limbo now. But anyway, they believe that you can pray a person out of purgatory or hell into heaven. Ask someone one time who believed that. I happen to have a Bible in my hand. And the Bible that I was holding happened to be of the denomination they were a member of. Because I was visiting in a hospital that was run by that denomination. And I just handed the Bible to them. I said, would you please find that in the Bible and show it to me? Well, they couldn't do it. So you can't prove there's a purgatory, but you can certainly prove, and I just read it to you, that there is a hell. And in the 25th and 26th verses... You know, beside, he said, beside all this between us and you, there's a great gulf fixed. And we're familiar with the term gulf because we live on the gulf coast. And that's not the type of gulf that's down there. I can assure you. It's a great distance. And at that time, paradise was somewhere down in the earth. And hell was some down, some somewhere down in the earth. But there's a great distance between paradise and hell. And so those that were in paradise could not go to hell, and those that were in hell could not go to paradise because of that great gulf being fixed. God fixed it that way so that one could not go from one place to another. And so, <clears throat> if you, my friend, Believe that it's possible 
to be released from hell and go to heaven, I'm afraid you're under the wrong impression. The scripture teaches that true falls, so shall it be. If a tree falls toward the east, that's the way it's going to be. Now, what about you? Even those in hell do not want others to come down there. I've heard all kinds of statements in trying to witness to people, uh, all kinds of statements made about hell. I've heard people say, well, if I go to hell, I'm going to have plenty of company. This is the kind of company you want. You want? You think for a moment, who's going to be in hell? Well, the Bible teaches that all unbelievers so how they're part of the lake of fire. Some of the most ungodly, vile, and vain people who ever lived on the face of this earth are going to be in hell. Not because they were vile, not because they were ungodly, but because they were unbelievers in the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you've ever heard cursing and swearing, I'm sure there's going to be much of it in hell. There are people who are so stubborn that they had rather burn in hell than to admit their need of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's just the way it is. And I don't understand that. You know, other than that, Zero turn went up in flames. I'm thankful that I was off. Because I've known people who burned up on my motors. One was a good friend. And so, as I think about it, those who are in hell and those who are going to hell, Think about what Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 5. I'm going to turn over there and read it to you. Isaiah made these statements about hell. Therefore hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure. And their glory and their multitude and their pomp. You pianists are... I'm sure are familiar with the term pomp and circumstance. It's a good tune that's played many times in graduation ceremonies. Well, all that pomp and all that circumstance, all that's going to be in hell. And he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. And the mean men shall be brought down. And the mighty men shall be humbled. The eyes of the lofty shall be humbled. To be in that horrible, that terrible place, yes, it would probably be crowded. But I just read to you that hell enlarges herself daily. It's a growing place. I remember one time many years ago, pastored this young person and they I don't want to say whether it was a girl or a boy, I don't want to identify who it was but they were not happy living in a small town and this person's home church, I was a pastor of it and it was in a small town <coughs> and I heard them make this statement one day. I'll be so glad when I graduate from high school and get out of this little rinky dick town and go to the big city. Well, they did. They stayed for a few years. And next news I know, they were moving back to that little rinky dinky town. They said they won't even, didn't want to have anything more to do with that part of town. Well, <clears throat> hell's a growing place. If you want to go to a growing place, just go to hell. 
because it's enlarging every day. But you read about the new heavenly city, it's four square, 1,500 miles square, and it's not going to grow in. It's as big as it'll ever be. And that tells me something. That tells me that many more are going to go into hell than are going to heaven. Because there's need for expansion of hell. For its borders to grow every day. You know, one day, all those in hell are going to stand in judgment. We can't hide from the judgments of God. There are several judgments that are taught in the Word of God. There's the judgment of the saved. There's the white throne of judgment. There's the judgment of the nations. And so on. But then, those who know Jesus Christ as their Savior one day will stand in the judgment seat of Christ and be rewarded accordingly. We'll give them account and be rewarded accordingly. But those who are not in that one will be at the white throne of judgment. And that's not the place where you want to be. That's not the place that you want to stand. The 20th chapter of the book of Revelation in verse 11, And I saw a great white throne, this is the Apostle John writing, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. He said, well, preacher, I've always heard that salvation is by grace through faith, not of works. This is not the judgment of the saved. This is the judgment of the lost. And the sea gave up the dead, which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. The new servant was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. <coughs> Notice that Scripture tells us that the books were opened in verse 12. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of the things which were written in the books according to their works. So men will stand, men, women, boys, girls, all unbelievers in Jesus Christ will stand at the white throne of judgment. Somehow people get the idea that God will make exceptions. There are no exceptions with God when it comes to the judgment. You're either saved or you're not saved. If you're saved, you won't be at this judgment. You'll be at the judgment seat of Christ. If you're not saved, you'll be at this judgment. You'll be judged according to your life's works, and then you'll be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone that burns forever. He said, this is the second death. You have the option. You can be born twice and die once, or you can be born once and die twice. It's up to you. I'm thankful that I was born once and I'll die twice. I won't have to die that second time. I'll die that one time. I'll die that physical death. And I won't die that spiritual death. Because my soul has been made alive through the blood 
of Jesus Christ. The rich man who died and in hell lift his eyes, being in torment. This was, some people maybe would call it a cultural shock. It was a great shock to him. And if you die without the Lord, it's going to be a great shock to you. When you're in hell and you're in torment, and there's no way to stop the pain. There's no way to end the suffering. That you'll not even be able to drink a cool cup of water. That you just burn and burn and burn. I like to go under Moses and the burning bush. Moses stood and he beheld this burning, this burning bush and it caught his attention, just as it would you or me. And the bush burned and burned and burned. It was not consumed. That's the way it's going to be with the unbelievers in hell. They're going to burn and burn and burn and not be consumed. <laughs> Physically, of course, I, I thank the Lord I've not had to experience this, but I've read articles on this that when the nerve endings burn away, when a person is being burned alive, that when it gets beyond that, that they feel no more pain. I don't know. I don't want to try to see. Many people down through time have been burned at the stake for different reasons. Some are accused of being witches. That's just during the Salem witch trials in this country, early history of this nation. Others in different places were burned for being Christians. And I can't imagine how horrific that must be. It hurts to even burn the end of your finger, doesn't it? Maybe you pick up a pot off the stove, you don't think it's as hot as it is, man, it just burns the fire. Out of it. it doesn't take a long set it down, does it? But then in hell, in the lake of fire, there's no way to get away from it. You can't back off over to a dark corner somewhere and sit down and get some relief. Because there'll be no dark corners. All consuming flame. One of the questions that I've been asked repeatedly down through the years, if God is such a loving God, why would, would he allow anyone to go to a place as horrible as hell? Do you realize that he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance? He made the way center for you to come to him. And it's free. Because Jesus paid the price. And sinners go into hell because they fail to trust Christ. Are you ready to go to heaven? Have your reservations been made in heaven? Are you a citizen of heaven? You know, when we trust Christ as our Savior, we become strangers and pilgrims here. And we're just sojourning through this land. The little house my wife and I live in, that's just our temporary boat. We talked a lot, you know, we're getting up to that age and we need to do some pre-planning and writing down 
instructions for our funerals and so on. And I made a statement not long ago, would it be wonderful if we just put together in the rapture to meet the Lord in the air. Now one time I was a little bit opposed to making pre arrangements. I said, you know what? What if I go down there and pay the funeral home all that money? Then I get caught up in the rapture. I just spent that money needlessly. But the Lord teaches us to prepare. He teaches us to be ready. And so I submit to you this morning, are you ready? Have you made your preparation to go home to be the Lord? The rich man failed to do so. He woke up in hell. Lazarus was prepared. He was ready. He said, oh, he's just a beggar. And he had to beg for crumbs that fell from the table. Who went to heaven? The rich man or Lazarus? Lazarus went to heaven not because he was a poor man, not because he was a beggar, but because his faith was in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's heaven or it's hell. Which one would you choose? I'm going to ask for a verse of imitation hymn as we sing this song. The Lord's dealt with your heart this morning. You come to Jesus, trust Him as Lord and Savior. Share the good news with us. If you're a member of church of life, faith, and you feel led to unite this church, if you have a prayer request, wherever you need would be, you come and stand and sing. 541.